Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. A Jim's restaurant with a history of roaches finds its way back behind the kitchen door for the third time. Tim Gerber tells us what health inspectors found this time. The summer sun is punishing, especially for those who work outside tonight. How lawmakers are pushing for more care for postal workers. And today was the seventh day in a row where we either tied or broke the record high temperature for the day. We're going to talk more about that, which other records are likely to fall, but also the newest drought monitor is in nearly 70% of Texas has fallen into drought. We'll take a bit of a comparison and a closer look at this in a bit. Adam, thank you. So tonight we're seeing just how dangerous this drought is getting. Take trees. Some of them in our area are just giving up. Yeah, the weather has been so dry for so long. Trees and limbs are falling sometimes on people. The night team's Patty Santos introduces us to a 77 year old man who is in the hospital after a branch fell right on top of him. Juan Cantu is still in the hospital after a tree limb fell on his head, fracturing both of his legs. It happened so quickly, Cantu says, there was no time to run away. He can only guess the pecan tree was affected by the drought. They just tend to have a little bit weaker wood and just can't really maintain its vitality with all of the, the struggles that Texas keeps throwing at us. Leaves drying up and falling off. Uh, Arborist Jess Divin with Davy Tree Expert says this heat and drought is making some trees simply give up. Well, I would assume at this point that all trees are struggling. Non-native trees such as red oaks and sycamores are faring the worst. Divin says live oaks and Texas cedars are holding on a little stronger. You can see there are some places here and there where entire little twigs are starting to die off. Um, and again, it just can't can't maintain the water flow to those those branches. He urges people to have their trees looked at by an arborist at least once a year, not only to save them, but also to prevent accidents. And we might be able to save a tree or help a tree um, that may be partially struggling right now um, to maintain its health so it doesn't get too far down the road because once a tree gets too far down the road, it can actually expire. The mortality starting at the tip of the leaf and starting to die back. Divin cares for this 350 year old live oak known as the wedding tree. He says it may take a few years before this year's drought catches up with it. But really drought can have long lasting impacts on trees. And he says focusing on watering the trees instead of the grass could possibly save it. And he says you got to do it at a slow drip like this. And you got to make sure that you water it not right near the trunk and not towards the end, but right in between the trunk and the canopy. Reporting live tonight, Patty Sempers, KSAT 12 News. That's, that's good advice, Patty. Thank you. The Texas A&M Forest Service tonight keeping a close eye on trees in our area. Woodland ecologist Carl Flocky says that drought plus fungi and insects contribute to the overall death of trees. A 2011 statewide study on the effects of the drought showed some 300 million trees were killed statewide. And that trend could continue if we don't get that good soaking rain soon. If we continue on the trend we're on uh, for, say, another year, we certainly will likely be seeing much more uh, decline in death of trees. We are seeing some decline in death now. Uh, it, we started seeing it last summer. Some trees are dropping their leaves early in an effort to save themselves. Carl, that gentleman you just heard from, has seen lots of post oak trees dying just east of I-35. So. The best thing that we can do is to plant native trees, which are more drought resistant. And now think about how dangerous this heat is for people who work outside, like the ones delivering our mail. Yeah, that's why this week several San Antonio lawmakers told the U.S. Postal Service to bring back bottled water for letter carriers. It comes just weeks after a USPS employee in Dallas died on the job as the heat index hit 115 degrees. The night team's John Paul Baraja spoke to local Postal Service employees about their situation and the changes they want to see in the name of safety. As our carriers are going down, I'm 55. Can happen to me any time. Homer Hernandez has delivered mail for 20 years. The only way he can describe the current conditions of the job? It's damn hot. Since the end of the COVID public health emergency, the U.S. Postal Service stopped giving its workers free water bottles. 
Now it offers them access to water fountains. Problem with that is, is they haven't maintained the drinking fountains the way they're supposed to be. They actually on my station, Adobe Station off of East Houston, we don't have a, a water fountain working. And water breaks are another issue. Luis Jordan is the Alamo branch president of the National Association of Mail Carriers. She says stopping for water during the shift isn't the problem. The issue is choosing between hydrating and staying on schedule. There have been threats that there could be discipline if they do that, if they deviate. If you don't make your timelines, they're going to get after you one way or the other. Several San Antonio lawmakers want USPS to ensure mail carriers can take necessary breaks from the heat without retaliation. In a recent letter to the Postmaster General, they also asked that letter carriers be able to pick up water bottles without penalty and have access to cold water without having to pay out of pocket. In a statement sent to KSAT, the U.S. Postal Service says potable water is available to employees. It also says its heat illness prevention plan includes posters and stickers to remind employees about the signs of heat-related illnesses, along with required heat safety training. There is now a national grievance because they paper-whipped a lot of that training and it actually did not happen with the carriers. About 100 hours worth of safety training classes that I've never taken. But it says you did. Yeah. We followed up with the Postal Service on the allegations about falsifying training hours and the lack of maintenance on water fountains. In an email, a spokeswoman told us the USPS had no comment. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. A group of lawmakers, Democrats Joaquin Castro, Greg Kassar, Henry Cuellar, along with Republican Tony Gonzalez, also asked the U.S. Postmaster to bring more air-conditioned mail vehicles to San Antonio. Because vehicles like this one called a long life vehicle or LLV, you see them all over town, they don't have air conditioning. They have a fan. However, the congressmen say the temperature in one of these LLVs can reach more than 110 degrees. The Postal Service says all vehicles it's bought since 2003 have AC, but only 34% of mail carrier trucks that are on the road actually have it right now. San Antonio City Council members will have their final say on the city's $3.7 billion budget proposal in mid-September. They heard the details of that proposal today. So it includes money to add police officers, increase the animal care services budget, and also a rate hike for trash collection. City staff is also going to host several budget town hall meetings starting Monday. If you want a full list of dates and also a breakdown of their proposal, head on over to KSAT.com. Just look for the story. My heart broke. Like, I was devastated. All the islands are our home. People in San Antonio reacting to the raging inferno in Hawaii. At least 53 people now confirmed dead. That number is likely to rise. Search and rescue operations happening in Maui right now as we speak. The Coast Guard has rescued dozens of people that had to go into the sea to escape that fire. Thousands more have left by air. Many of the people on the ground calling this destruction apocalyptic. Now, just days after the apartment fire back here at home off of Gus Eckert Road, crews are demolishing what's left of that building that burned down. Yeah, people who lived in that apartment building are speaking out tonight, saying they are struggling, but still finding ways to move forward. The night team's Avery Everett sat down with one of those victims tonight. Flames ignite coming right at me. This site is still stuck in Don Oliva's head. Flames were thickening, the wind was blowing, and they were getting bigger. Oliva was able to get out before a fire destroyed her apartment Sunday night. Giant pieces of the roof are now flying in the air on in flames. No one was hurt, but the building at this complex off Gus Eckert Road is a total loss. The cause of the fire is still unknown, but crews are actively starting to sort through this rubble. It looks like a lot of damage, but people who used to live here say some of their fondest physical memories, like photos and clothing, are all amongst that destruction. But all of my photographs, my canvases of my grandchildren all over the house are gone. Aliva's apartment was on the bottom floor. Among what was lost in the fire, her two cats. Lily and Marilyn. It's a loss Oliva is struggling to accept. I know that the minute I fill out my loss is when I will cry, and I'm not ready yet to do that. But she says she's finding hope. Yes. Hope in still having her life, and hope through having her family. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Feel for Dawn and those that lost so much. San Antonio firefighters confirmed Sunday night that crews faced multiple issues 
to try to put out that apartment fire like weak water pressure and fire hydrants. On KSAT.com, we have a breakdown of some of those issues and the San Antonio Water Systems response. In other news now, work is going to continue tomorrow on a sinkhole along New Sulphur Springs Road. It's near Jasper Hollow, about a mile east of Loop 410 on the city's east side. City crews replaced a collapsed storm pipe overnight, and Public Works expects the road repairs to wrap up by 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Also happening tomorrow, the beginning of tax-free weekend. Shoppers can save on school supplies and most clothes, shoes, and backpacks under $100. There are some exceptions, though. Jewelry and purses do not qualify. We have a link to the full list of eligible items right now on KSAT.com. A bag of chili powder with live weevils and ants invading a bag of dried shrimp. That adds up to a low score for a local restaurant. Tim Gerber tells us the other bugs inspectors found crawling around when we come back. Roaches and dirty conditions lead to reinspections for a local restaurant and coffee shop and a convenience store with a history of low scores. It's not the first time the night team's Tim Gerber has reported on the problems behind their kitchen doors. Picnic Foods, located in the 1200 block of South General McMullen, had their June inspection score of 81 posted right on their front door. It was a two point drop from the 83 they had when they were on BKD back in January. This time there was a roach in a cooler on the service line as well as many flies in the business. That roach came in contact with ready to eat lettuce and cut tomatoes. The pickle tongs were rusty, the ice scoop found on top of the dirty ice machine and the ice bucket was broken and cracked. The inside of the ice machine had a pink and black mold like substance growing on the walls. They also needed to clean up grease that was caked on the floors, equipment, and walls. A reinspection was ordered. Lucy's Cafe in the 500 block of West Mitchell Street earned an 82. Some foods were found held at improper temperatures. A bag of chili powder had live weevils, while a bag of dried shrimp had ants. Small live roaches were also spotted near a sink. Metal racks in a refrigerator had peeling paint and they needed to do a thorough cleaning. They were given 10 days to make corrections before reinspection. Jim's Restaurant, located at the corner of Culebra and Loop 1604, earned an 86 and a reinspection. This is the third time the business has been on BKD. Raw chicken in a cooler was too warm. It was moved to a working cooler. There were live roaches along the cooking line and in a non-working cooler. The business told to intensify cleaning efforts to remove food and grease buildup on the walls, floors, and ceilings. They were also told to stop storing employee hats on top of clean plates. From behind the kitchen door, Tim Gerber, KSET 12 News. All right, now we're going to take a live look outside. I wish I could say it was on a lighter note, but it's uh, 90 degrees out there right now. And there's one word that we keep using over and over we have to think of a new word and that's record when it yes. comes to the weather we keep breaking them what did we you do. say the other day relentless relentless yeah it's, yeah. it's the relentless heat high and relentless heat that we have and honestly i was looking at the patterns and a couple of analogs and i'm thinking we've got another two weeks of this type of heat that's uh, at least above 100 and between about 102 to 106 thinking at least another couple of weeks hey, today though let's get to this first our another record seventh day in a row in San Antonio, where we've either tied or exceeded the record high today by one degree, making it to 106 this afternoon. The average being 97. Climatologically speaking, this is the hottest time of year with the warmest average high temperature. It wasn't just San Antonio breaking a record. I'm going to highlight all the records on this map here. Abilene, San Angelo, Del Rio, 110, 111 for high temperatures. Laredo made it up to 110. That was actually a record, by the way. Austin, 107 for the high temperature. Catula, 111 for the high. By the way, Del Rio, 11 days in a row of record tying or record breaking high temperatures. And more to come, likely. 80 degrees tomorrow morning, 93 at noon, then 106 the high. Basically just a rinse and a repeat. Control C, Control V every day. Copy paste, or is it command C and command V now for the uh, the max? Anyway, 
See, this is what these kind of weather patterns do to you, right? 106 in Pleasanton tomorrow, Catula 109, Eagle Pass about 108, Canyon Lake 104. It's going to be just more of the same, Lavernia 106. So looking ahead, if you're keeping track at home, we are forecasting now of the next seven days, six of them to be record tying or record breaking for the afternoon high. The new drought monitor is in. Of course, it's not good news for us. North Texas is in much better shape than we are. We've got this area of extreme and exceptional drought. Exceptional drought here in the Hill Country. Bandera, Comfort, Bernie, Fair Oaks Ranch, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, all included, even creeping toward Bulverde now. And that's the worst drought category and really the worst part of drought in the entire state, but all of South Central Texas has been falling into drought. Now I'm gonna compare this to seven weeks ago and look at that difference. And once we pulled out of the spring with some decent rain in a good chunk of our area, now we go back to today and you see how that drought is spreading and areas just you know, two months ago weren't even in drought along the coastal plain. Now in the moderate drought category. So of course we're looking for rain, <laughs> almost always are around here. Closer to Abilene and Brownwood, we had some thunderstorms today, far west Texas, but we're just not in the mix right now. We've got that relentless high overhead and it's not gonna move much over at least the next week. And I think two weeks, it's really gonna be centered pretty much overhead. So it's gonna def deflect all the rainfall potential up and around our area and generally out of Texas as well. Take a look at the aquifer since the start of the year. This is year to date. Notice when we got those spring rains, we had a nice boost still below average, and then we've dried out quite a bit. And now we're well below average in terms of the aquifer level. We're about 31 feet below the August average. And that puts us in a fire danger too, because it shows how dry we are. The grass is very dry. Vegetation is dry. Afternoon relative humidity is low and the wind picks up as well. Some gusts of 30 miles per hour. So extreme fire danger uh, along parts of the Colorado River there, just north of uh, Lake Buchanan, and then also high to very high fire risk. It doesn't mean the weather's going to cause a fire, but a simple discarded cigarette or a spark from a chain dangling under a trailer can quickly start a fire, even power tools, you know, things you don't always think of, some power tools that create sparks, because we've got record challenging heat, and nothing but sunshine to continue. All right, Adam, thank you. You know, this is almost becoming an annual trip for our sports department. Let's head to the Hall of Fame and see which spur or spur connection gets in this year. It is, yep. Coming up, Larry Ramirez is at the site of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame on the eve of the enshrinement for a few Spurs legends. Plus, the Texans come out victorious in their first preseason game. We'll break it down after the break. Another class of San Antonio legends will be enshrined in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame this weekend. KSAT 12 Sports made the trip to Springfield, Massachusetts this morning, and photog Mark Mendez got these shots from inside the hall, a destination for any basketball fan. For more on the big weekend, here is our own Larry Ramirez inside the Hall of Fame. Yeah, thanks, Mary. So San Antonio is home to five NBA championships and multiple basketball Hall of Famers. This year's class will include Greg Popovich, Becky Hammond, and Tony Parker. Now, Tony becomes the final member of the Big Three to get his call to the Hall, and he's thrilled to be going in with Becky. To share that, you know, with Coach Pop and Becky Hammond, uh, we're pretty good friends with Becky. She's like my big sister. Uh, it's pretty amazing that we're going into the Hall of Fame, all three together. So uh, I'm really looking forward for that experience. It's pretty humbling. Uh, it's fun to go in with them, but still humbling in the sense it's not something you think about while you're growing up, while you're in the business. That's that's not in your head. And, you know, when People would say Hall of Fame, you know, to me that always and still does means uh, Red Holtzman, uh, Red Auerbach, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. To me that's Hall of Fame. You know, Pop's numbers are definitely Hall of Fame worthy. And now that he's locked up with the Spurs for another five seasons, you know he's just going to keep adding to his impressive basketball resume. That's all from Springfield. Mary, back to you.
Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Just a couple of hours down the road from Larry, the Houston Texans get to leave Foxborough victorious, defeating the Patriots 20-9 in the team's preseason opener. More importantly, it was a short and at times shaky NFL debut for the Texans' number two overall pick, C.J. Stroud. Stroud went 2-4 of four for 12 yards with an interception, rushed twice for six yards, and was sacked once. QB Davis Mills entered the game after Stroud and threw a six-yard TD pass to rookie Tank Dell to ignite the offense. Case Keenum also threw one across the goal line for six. And there you have it. The Texans get contribution from all over for the 20 to 9 win over New England. Next, Houston hosts Miami during week two of the NFL preseason. And after the break, SAFC is under investigation by the USL Championship League. Stay with us. Premier striker Tani Alawashi and San Antonio FC came out on the winning end of another tough battle with Phoenix Rising FC 2-1 last weekend. Tani, the MLS Loney, is in the process of putting together one of the most prolific goal-scoring campaigns in USL Championship history, most recently scoring the game-winning goal in stoppage time against Phoenix, although the win has since been clouded by allegations. During the match, one of San Antonio's coaches allegedly spoke a racially charged insult towards fans. Today, head coach Ellen Marcina responded to the alleged incident. As a club, we have completed the internal investigations and um, appropriate actions uh, have been put into place. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there is racism doesn't belong in our sport. The USL has opened an investigation and will not comment until the investigation is complete. SAFC will play at New Mexico United Saturday night. The Central Catholic High School community and many others mourning the passing of longtime San Antonio area head coach Mike Santiago after a battle with cancer. Santiago has served as Central Catholic's football coach since 2017 and prior to that was at the helm of Incarnate Word Football. The school saying in a statement today, Coach Santiago was an inspiration to all and he will be deeply missed. Coach Santiago leaves us at 68. Central Catholic's first home game of the season is on September 1st when they face Somerset. Guessing they'll have some sort of memorial for the coach there. I'm, I would be very surprised if Incarnate Word doesn't have something too because it was integral to that program. Absolutely. I'm sure we can expect them on the season openers. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this. Okay, this is your reminder. Now is the time to get your tickets for this year's 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic, one of high school football's biggest events. Bigger than last year because we've added an extra night of football. Yeah, the two-day event starts with one game on Friday, August 25th, inside the Dome, then three games on Saturday, August 26th, inside the Dome. <laughs> tickets on sale now. If you're a KSAT insider, you can get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house. So here's what you do. You can just scan that QR code that you see on your screen and get more information, or just head on over to ksat.com. Now, going back to school is about far more than just shopping. It's also about making sure that kids and families are ready for the potential stress of a new year. Now, tonight's case at Taunton Hall was nurturing minds as we go back to school, and it focused on concerns from both students and teachers. You can hear the discussion and also get some tips on coping strategies and stress management right now at ksat.com. Here's a quick look at the ERCOT supply and demand forecast. And you notice how we'll have enough energy, but do your best to conserve between 3 and 8 p.m. By the way, today was our 45th 100 degree day. Climbing up the Hang charts. <laughs> Good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.